Welcome everybody logging on. Welcome friends and family. Hope you're doing fantastic. To anyone that I personally know that's watching, welcome brothers and sisters, not just in Christ, my, my real siblings, I hope you see this, aunts and uncles, cousins, friends, um, parents, and finally to the rest of the world, family of believers, and people that have absolutely no clue what I'm talking about. Welcome. I love you. God loves you. Thank you for joining. Um, I hope that these messages have been a, a huge, incredible blessing to you. I hope that wherever you're watching from, that you're comfortable. You get the micro microwave popcorn or you know whatever you have and, and settle in. It's going to be a great message. Today we're going to be talking about why you can't live godly why you can't live godly and I think you're gonna find it very insightful every everything that I say is from the Word of God outlined in the Bible so as we enter into the message let's start with prayer before God that he's going to bless you and open up your eyes spiritually to to what's going on throughout the message and finally at the end I'm going to give another invitation to pray with me and make the biggest decision that you've ever made in your life that's going to carry on not only in this lifetime but the one to come so Heavenly Father I pray that anyone watching today and in the future would be enormously blessed by this message I pray that you would be with them wherever they go I pray that if this is anyone's last time that they would ever have the opportunity to make Jesus Christ their Savior, that Holy Spirit, you would convict them so much so that they know they know that they know that they have to get right with you, Lord. It's your will that none should perish. So I pray for anyone else that's watching that this would be spiritual nourishment and encouragement, that Holy Spirit, you would speak through me and speak to your people whatever it is that you want them to hear. I thank you for putting this message on my heart. And I pray that you would, you would be with us and, and anoint us with fresh oil from on high. In Jesus' name, amen. So the message today is why you can't live godly. Sort of a, a, uh, an enticing title there but you can live godly and we're going to talk about what the difference is and what the Bible says about having the power of God in your life this this message found in 2nd Timothy was very inspiring to me that what it says can be directly correlated with how we live our life and the difference will certainly show so in 2nd Timothy 3 1 through 5 the Bible says and I read, he I read a lot from the Bible. Heavy word content is what's going to drive the true message of the gospel going forward. And the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So I could bring as much swagger uh, that I could bring, but nothing's going to make the difference like the content that comes from the Bible. So the Bible says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. Most lovers of themselves and, and what the Bible outlines here won't even be able to sit through this whole message. But I pray that you will and that this will find you well and that you'll, you'll be supernaturally transformed like I have. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. It's, I could go on this whole message just from that 
excerpt in the scripture, but having a form of godliness, but denying its power. So the Bible says that the people, all those, uh, uh, you know, unkind descriptions, but is describing the world in these last days, that they're going to have a form of godliness. What does it mean? That people will be operating like they are people of God in doing things that is pleasing in other people's eyes. Feeding the homeless, um, doing works of, you, you know, humanitarian works, um, going into thir third world countries and building shelters, uh, you know, taking care of animals, whatever. All good things, we are called to do that, but it, it's saying that truly they're going to have a, formally, uh, a form of godliness on the outside by the works that they do, but denying the power thereof. So what's the power? The power is the Holy Spirit. The power is the Spirit of God, that it's God's will to have living on the inside of you to direct you in your everyday life and then to to use you as conduit for his supernatural power to do mighty works in this earth for his glory. I've, I've described on other uh, videos before of how much of the presence of God that I've felt on my tangible body and how much of his power that I've felt maybe flow through me into other people at times. And it, it's absolutely incredible. You have to keep... Now, once you... Um, once you have the Holy Ghost and are baptized in, in the Holy Spirit and fire, it, it causes you to operate in such a way that is pleasing to God. And, and that's where true godliness comes from. So why you can't live godly on your own? Because you don't have the Spirit of God and you're not being directed by His will for your life. And if you think about it, the Bible says, I'm not going to get into the last days and, and end time prophecy and everything, but it says there will be terrible times in the last days. And if you think about that description of people, I'll read it again, that that's truly how we're living, that that's how people are in their everyday life, that, that, that they're scoffing at the things of God. And it, it describes people as lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And the Bible doesn't say hang out with them on the weekends. It doesn't say witness to them but hang out with them. It doesn't, it says have nothing to do with such people. There's a part of the world that completely denies God, that they are all those things, but have no fear of the living God who's ready to judge everyone for according to their works. We can only be made right in the eyes of God through His Son, Jesus Christ, who I'm going to give the invitation for you to pray and accept into your life. I'm going to lead you in the sinner's prayer at the end of this message. But, so the Bible says that we're to have nothing to do with those people. It's our job, yes, to bring the Word of God, to bring the invitation uh, to invite them to church, to invite them to Bible study, to invite them into Christian and, and Christ-like and Bible-based activities, you know, so that they will be brought into the light but not to be sucked into their world and their realm of, of action. Now, again, I'm not anybody else. I was, I was one of these people. I was a lover of money. I was boastful. I was proud. I was, um, you know, conceited at times. And, and so I've struggled with things, these things in my own life. But then when I sought God with everything that I had and he showed up, it, uh, it, he did and has been and is doing such a work in me where I'm realizing that the Bible outlines these behaviors of, of people of the world and of the flesh and that it's not righteousness. But we're going to 
have the power of God live inside us and direct us and help us to bring forth the fruit of the Spirit, the love, the peace, the joy, the self-control, the long-suffering, the patience, kindness, gentleness to other people, which in your eyes might sound like weakness. And the devil's a liar. He's going to tell you that that's all weakness and that, you know, that's, that's one of the big things, especially when human pride gets in the way. It's a very poisonous, dangerous thing that you don't want to allow into your life. Instead, we need to take a stance of humility and to seek out to operate our lives as followers of Christ. And then once you have the Holy Ghost and fire, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a driving, burning force in your life to allow you to live for God how He wants us to. So if, example, if you try and pray and you're not, you believe in God, but you don't know about all this Holy Ghost and fire stuff, and say, I, I would challenge you, try to spend an hour in prayer you're going to find that it's a very fruitless work by the flesh and by the carnal mind because we need the Spirit of God to draw us into prayer, to show us what to pray, to show us who to pray for, and to be in communion with Him and to be shouting out praise and worship to Him. We can't do that in, in the flesh. The Bible says that the flesh and the carnal mind is enmity against God. So I would challenge you, Try to, you know, try to pray for an hour and you're going to find without the power of God that it's, it's very fruitless. You're going to go through all the things that you're grateful for. You're going to thank them. You're going to bring all your prayer requests and then you're going to find two minutes and 30 seconds went by and you're going to say, wow, I'm supposed to do this for an hour. So it's the Spirit of God that it's His will to live inside of us even today. I'm not going to tell you about the... the my testimony of receiving the Holy Spirit, but you'll know for sure when He comes in, into you and lives inside you. There'll be an awareness. You'll feel connected to God. You'll feel in, in communion with God. You'll be attracted to prayer, to church, to reading the Bible, to witnessing to other people. You'll have joy and peace unspeakable. Some of you out there rely on alcohol, marijuana, prescription drugs, cocaine, um, just just filth, filth from the world that the world calls okay to calm you down, to relax you, to give you a, a sense of peace, which is false peace. It's only the one true God that comes in and that can give you that supernatural joy and peace to operate in your life. And no matter what the circumstances that your life has in front of you, no matter what you're going through, God, there's nothing the devil has done to you that God can't do something about it right now. And, and throughout the course of time of living in prayer and of living in God's word and of living in praise and prayer. And the Bible says that, that God inhabits the praise of his people. So when you're praising and worshiping him and drawing near to him, you're in the presence of God. So moving forward, and I, I feel like this is a very good follow-up message from the one I just did, Flesh versus the Spirit. This is a very good one that we're only able to carry out the work of the ministry and witnessing to other people through the Holy Spirit. So in John chapter, read John chapter 3 in your own time. Awesome, awesome chapter and book in the Bible. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born again when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Excuse me. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. 
so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will I speak? How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? So Jesus is saying, how can I tell you about all the mysteries and wonders that God has for us in heaven if you can't understand me saying that you must be born of the Spirit? This piece of scripture came illuminated in my life when I started to hear the voice of God, the inward witness, the still, quiet, small voice telling me what to do and where to go. That that came alive in my life when, when I was thinking, Okay, I heard the Spirit of God tell me not to go. In this case, I was on my way to get a haircut one time, and he said, don't go. And I heard it so clearly because I wanted to get a fresh haircut, but I heard him tell me not to. So I said, okay. And I was just doing that in faith that it was him speaking to me. I turned around and started to walk home. And I said, and... um. And I was crossing the street. I was coming up. I was walking up the sidewalk. And there was a girl crossing the street. And she was on the phone. Just had her head down like talking into the phone. And then she turned out and yelled in my direction. It's a sign. And then turned her head back and kept walking. And I'm like. I, I just stopped. And I'm like. Am I really seeing this? Like is this really happening right now? Because I just heard the Spirit of God not to tell me not to go to that barber shop. So I obeyed him and I turned around and I'm walking. And then that girl just yelled out, it's a sign. Clearly not talking to the person on the phone and kept going. And then that, when I read that, I was like, wow. Because he said, you should not be surprised at me saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear it sound but cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus had no clue what he was talking about. But I, now I, I saw that and I'm like, truly I'm obeying the very words of God because he's you know, out of faith that it's actually him. And it was all for a purpose. I'm not going to go into the whole testimony. Uh, reach out if you want the details. So most people want to go from earth to heaven. They say, when I die, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. And if you've ever said, I want to go to hell with all my friends, you can't talk to anyone there. You don't want to go to hell. It's a lie from the enemy. And the cuteness and, and pride and despicable misleading of the world to let anyone think that they want to go to hell. If you've said it, pray for forgiveness that God will hear you. And join me in the sinner's prayer at the end of this message here. But so most people want to go from earth to heaven. How many of you know that you can bring heaven to earth? And that's what we're talking about. it Being born of the Spirit. Having the Spirit of God. Living a godly life according to His word. And, and carrying out that work in the power of the Spirit of God. And, it's, and if you think about it, Jesus said in, in the model prayer, in the Our Father, He said, Father, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we know it's God's will for His will to be done here on earth. So us as believers, we need to carry out the works of ministry. It's not just for the pastors or the priests or the bishops or whoever has the microphone at the front of the room, or the deacons, whoever. It's not for them to be carrying out the work of ministry. Jesus gave to himself pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and apostles for the equipping of the saints to carry out the works of ministry. So when we go to church as Christians, as believers in God, 
it, we're getting our spiritual nourishment so that we can go on through the rest of the week witnessing to people, being a witness for Christ in our everyday life in Walmart while we're shopping, when we're at Starbucks, when we're in an Uber, um, when we're at work, when we're with our extended family, when we're, no matter what the circumstances, we are to every day carry out the works of ministry. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, it is precious. It is precious when you bring Christ into, publicly into your life and into other people's lives. I met a guy on my birthday, I was walking to work and he was on the, on, you know, at the bus stop waiting and he was all messed up. And I said, hey man, Jesus loves you. It's all I could do to get that out. And he said, does he really? And I turned around and you could tell if anyone needed love, it was this man right here. And I walked back towards him and I witnessed to him about Christ. And I told him how much Jesus loved him and, I, and, and how much of a benefit and a blessing it is to have Christ as Lord and Savior. And he accepted Christ into his life right then. And he said, thank you. He, 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 now, I didn't save him. I didn't get him saved. Jesus did for paying the price for all of our sins. But I led him to Jesus. I brought my Jesus to him. And, and he held my hand at the end of it and gripped me tightly. And he said, thank you. Thank you, Rob. And total stranger. And I knew, I saw at that point how much it meant to bring God to someone who has no clue that he's there, that he's watching, that he's listening, that he has a will for their life, that he loves them. So it's our job as believers to get equipped for the works of the ministry, to go out, to witness to people, to pray for people, to ask, ask people, no matter what rejection or reaction that we get. Jesus accepted us. We know our end. And we have to be ready in season and out of season, according to the Bible, to be a witness and, and to share our faith and, and our hope in Jesus Christ to the world. And if you're waiting for a, a perfect situation, because so much in our carnal mind we think, I, I'll share God in the right situation. And and it, be, it, it can become easy to think like that. And, you know, it's, it's not going to happen where someone sits next to you at Starbucks and they just say, hey, man, what do you think about God? Like, do you think he's real? Sure, it might happen like that, but we can't rely on those situations. We have to have um, fervors and passion to carry out the work of God while we're on this earth. And we can't do it without the Spirit of God. So, moving on, the Bible talks about right there, the, the Holy Ghost and fire. So, it's our job to be baptized in water and then baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Now, we, we have to pray for the Holy Ghost and the fire baptism. And he says that he pours out his spirit on, on who he decides. So we have to pray to God. It's a, the Bible says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. The righteousness is of God and they'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So again, we see that power when the Holy Spirit, we see that power of the Holy Spirit that comes on us. So if you remember, the, um, when Jesus was on the cross, there was a criminal next to him hanging on the cross. And he said, if you're truly the Son of God, don't forget me. And Jesus said, you'll be in, truly, you'll be in paradise with me. Well, let me tell you something. You and I are not the criminal on the cross. He went to heaven. He didn't have time to get baptized. He just believed in Jesus and he went to heaven. We know him to be in heaven. But me and you, we have the time on the earth. Don't wait for God to bring you the right situation or circumstance. Go to the church, find a way, but get baptized in, in action and in faith that God's going to baptize you in His Holy Ghost and fire. But go and get water baptized in the name of Jesus. 
and pray that he will baptize you in his Holy Ghost and fire. We need to, um, the Bible says that God will draw near to you when you draw near to him. So it's our job to press forward. And then once you receive that power that the Holy Spirit brings, all this work of the ministry stuff that I'm talking about and being a witness out in the world and in our everyday walk, that's going to become very easy and you'll actually find that it's going to be hard to not talk about Jesus to people because the presence of God is going to invade your life in such a way that you're going to say, this is incredible. God's closer than I think. He's hearing. He's watching. He hears my prayers. He sees me in the tough times that I go through. His word is true. So we have to seek him and continue to study the word of God. So I just realized I'm 25 minutes in and nowhere near where I want to be at the end. Doing all right. So in Mark, he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues, which I've experienced. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. Mark 16, 15 through 18. So the Bible outlines right there that in the picking, of, picking up of the snakes and drinking deadly poison, it says it will not hurt them at all. It's saying that the presence of God is going to be with us, that we come under a supernatural protection from God where He's going to protect us and how precious it is for us to be doing His work on this earth. Uh, one of my favorite preachers said, there isn't a perfect Christian factory that spits out perfect sinless Christians. It's just you and me and the people that we bring into the kingdom to be baptized, equipped, study the Word of God, and then bring... Jesus into the world. Uh, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then when I go, ye are the light of the world. So it's us, it's, it's up to us to shine forth the light of God. And the Bible says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. All the, the love and the, the joy and the uplifting and the encouragement and every kind word that we can bring to another person, we can trust that that's going to be leading of the Holy Spirit when we're operating of the Spirit and not of the flesh that we can operate with the fruit of the Spirit and again and these signs will accompany those accompany those who believe it doesn't say these signs will accompany um, the leaders of the church and and the pastors and no it says those who believe and sin, and that's something I've been so become so passionate about and, and encouraging to other believers about is I've seen signs and wonders in my life and it was so much so in a small short period of time that caused me to start making these videos and bringing the word of God to you. I know I'm called to be an evangelist but I was so passionate after these signs and wonders showed up because I believed on God's word and believed in him that I'm like, I can't wait for any perfect timing or after Bible college or after being ordained. I'm going to start living out my calling as an evangelist and encourage the body of Christ that, listen, no matter what's going wrong in your life, bring God, bring Jesus, bring your faith to those who are unbelieving. There's a famous preacher who said, um, I might have shared this early in the video. I did a couple takes, so forgive me. But he was a drug addict and an alcoholic for 22 years. And then God radically changed his life. But for 22 years, he was completely lost in his sin. And he said, nobody told me about Jesus. In 22 years, nobody told me about Jesus. So how precious it is, are, you know, is it going to be when you bring the word of God to other people? who are out in the world that have no clue and that, you know, ultimately are hungry for answers that only God can provide. In Luke 24, 49, it says, I am going to send you what my Father has promised, 
but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. There it is again, power from on high. I'm not about to share a, a story twice that I hadn't shared. If I hadn't shared it with you on, on this one particularly, that I was in the front of the church, bowing down at the altar as a sign to God, I don't care who's watching, I don't care if it looks foolish in the natural, I'm bowing down before you, Almighty God, because I fear you, I love you, I want to show you I'm serious about living for you. And then, then you know, the, the worship service was over, church continued, I went back to my seat, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, whoa, I feel drunk. I feel like really drunk right now. And it was the anointing and the presence of God that was resting on me that I, I could feel it in such a way that the Bible, when the Bible says you have been clothed until you have been clothed with the power from on high, I know what that power is because I felt it. And I sat there praying like, God, don't take away your presence. Don't take away your presence. And, it, and once you have one experience like that with God, you get hungry for more. And it's, and it's never enough. And it drives you to live um, a life for God. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 to 18, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them, like stars in the sky, excuse me, as you hold firmly to the world, the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on that day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. So it's God we see who works in us, and we are to work out our salvation in Christ in fear and trembling. And again, I, I've given this illustration before. Like When I got the Holy Spirit, I'm like, man, I'm all set. I'm like a, a fully ready-to-go equipped Christian. And even over the course of the last few month, months where I see the Holy Spirit twisting and churning me in situations where I'm operating more by the fruit of the Spirit, and more according to God's will. And as I'm studying the Word and drawing near to God, that, that He's truly doing the work in me, and it's my job to do, to work out my salvation in trembling in a fear of the, the Almighty God one day judging me. And, and we have to not only be fearful of punishment, we, don't, we need not to only have a fear of going to hell, but we have to have a fear of God as our Father, as Creator of the heaven and, 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 and the earth and all the universe, that He searches the, the hearts and the minds of men, that He'll be pleased with us, that overall, because none of us are pure and blameless, only Jesus was perfect, but overall, how we decided to live our life and how we decided to repent, meaning turn away from a life of sin that wasn't pleasing to Him and to draw near to Him and do our best for Him is how He's going to judge us and reward us. And again, that, that living for God can't come by our own decision. It has to become, come from the Spirit of God working through us. So all this born again talk, I'm going to give you the, the invitation, like I said earlier in the video, for you to be born again to make Jesus Christ Lord over your life, which is how the Bible shows us we have everlasting life, that we don't go to heaven through our own good works. So if you've never made that decision, or you said, I've fallen away from God, or I feel distant from Him, pray this prayer with me, 
in faith that he's listening and that this is truly the way that you're going to be made right in the eyes of God. Say this with me out loud. Because Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father. So we're, I'm going to lead you in that prayer, and then I'm going to pray for you personally to receive the Holy Ghost and fire, which I've heard of so, through so many um, video testimonies of, of people watching a video like this, and the, the minister on the other end of the camera praying for the Holy Ghost and fire, and that he went ahead in time, God went ahead in time, knows that this was going to happen, that you were going to see this video. And then he says, my son or my daughter is now ready to be clothed in power. I'm going to pour out my Holy Ghost and fire on this one today. So I'm going to pray for you to receive the Holy Ghost and fire personally, like I have myself. So if it, again, the prayer to receive Jesus. Pray this prayer out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm sorry for living a life that wasn't pleasing to you. Please forgive me for my sins and cleanse me by the blood of Jesus. Jesus, please come into my life, into my heart, and be Lord and Savior over me and my life. Please help me to live for you and help me to turn from my wicked ways. I thank you, Jesus, and I thank you, God, that you've done this for me. Amen. So I, I, I'm ecstatic from the inside out that you've said that prayer, and now I want to pray for you. Just bow your head, close your eyes, bow your heart before the Almighty God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would pour out your Holy Ghost and fire today. That what your, what your word says about being baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire and being clothed with power from on high, I pray that for whoever is listening and watching right now, that you would pour out your spirit onto them, Father, that they would have a supernatural testimony for the glory of God, that they would be illuminated and set on fire for you to carry out the works of the ministry in their life, that they would be like the stars that shine and that they would lead many to a, a knowledge of Jesus Christ as Savior. Lord, I pray for you. Fill them again and again with your Holy Ghost and fire. Make it so prominent and prevalent and let your, your, let your presence invade the room for them to feel your power and for them to know that they've been made well in your eyes and help them to carry out the, the calling that you have on their life. I pray this in Jesus' name and I thank you that it's done. I thank you, Father, that you're a, you're a good, good father to us. I thank you for everything that you're doing in my life. And I pray that the efforts of this video would continue to go forth and bless many people and reach the lost in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you for sticking with me on these video messages. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you for bringing the word of God to the, the people out there in your world that need it. And I, I, I pray that you would be blessed, that you would join me on the next one. Please feel free to send me your testimony. Um, make Leave comments, leave um, prayer requests, whatever it is. I love you, brothers and sisters in Christ. I congratulate you. Um, the, the new born-again believers who came in to the, the family of God today, and just know that I'm praying for you. I'm rooting for you. God has a good plan for your life. And there's nothing that the devil has done in your life that God can't supernaturally release you from and, and send an influx of his power into whatever situation it is that you're battling with. So um, that's it. I'll see you on the next one. God bless you. And go in peace.